This may be the greatest movie ever made! <laughs> Please welcome James Spader, everybody! Thanks so much for being on the show. I'm such a huge fan of you. And I, you. I wonder, it's too much to ask you right Where off. Where did you get oranges oh, at this I'll, hour? We'll get to this. Don't, don't worry about that. I went, there's an all-night farmer's market. Oh, there yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to, can you actually do that with your ears? Oh, hold on. <laughs> a simple no would have been fine. Yeah. yeah. Right, uh, we're having an experiment here. Think of uh, think of this show as uh, as you know, a sort of little Pee Wee's Playhouse, and um, <laughs> we're trying to. We wonder. I, I have to see if this orange fits inside this cup. I, it's very important for some Norwegians are distressed. <laughs> and I wondered if you'd care to join me. Yeah, I'll help. All right then. Do you want to go first? Well, how big's your orange? <laughs> Yeah, I've probably got the smaller orange. So you go first because you get the bigger orange and you're the guest. Hmm, I think. No, no, no forcing about. Hey, hey, no, hey. no. <laughs> Maybe Just I think a I've got. Forcing. I know I've got some gel, some kind of lubricant. No, no. This orange isn't going. All right then, that's fine. Well, that's that's one. Uh, we can maybe try. You look very good at that. You've probably done that before, once or twice. Let's Working see. as well as the ears did. <laughs> No, right, okay, well, thanks for that. Um, there you go. So you don't do... I think we all know it didn't work. It, uh, it, it, was, for, it was for the Norwegians. Should have gotten lychee nuts or something. Le lychee nuts? How'd you, how'd you get them? At the, at the all-night all -night farmer's market. market over there, yeah. And up in Hollywood Boulevard, you can also get... How are you? You good? I was listening to you when you were setting up what at the moment seemed like the most, just the great spontaneous thing to pull those, all those nice women down with their sundresses on. It was really great. But then to cut to about five to seven minutes later when all of a sudden you were obliged to bring Randy down and yeah. do the type of and your whole, it was so sad to go from that elation of bringing yeah. all those women down with the sundresses to then it had all turned into a terrible obligation. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That you've frankly been having to make up for for the rest of I the... I know, well, I feel so bad. No, I'm going to get into terrible I know, apologizing. No, you won't. You, you know you think so? No, it was a great pleasure. They should all come up here again. You all look good. No, 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 no. You really no, Because uh, then Randy might come up too, and I... Yeah. Do you, like a, do you like a sundress on a lady, James? I love a sundress. Yeah, yeah. And on a lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the film, uh, the shorts film, it's, uh, it's a regular length of a film, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I worked five days on this movie. Really? Five days. That's quite a long time. No, it was really, it was, it was, it was really, it, it was, uh, I'd read the script and, and I sort of play the, the bad guy if there is such a thing in the film. There really isn't. It's a, it's a kid's film and right. it really isn't. Um, there are no real bad guys or, you know, it's the kids that are at the center of it. But anyway, I was throughout the picture and, and I, you know, was shooting a TV show and, right. and they said, we'll only need you for five days. And I was just amazed by that. I mean, normally that role would have taken me, you know, a month and a half over but the But they just of, they put all that... Room. I'm telling you from the moment, because Robert Rodriguez, who directed the film and wrote it and produced it and, you know, does everything. Yeah, no, he does all that stuff. Yeah. He's been here, you know, he's quite tall and wears a hat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't and, uh, That's how I knew him as well. Right. But, yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he's the tall hat director. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, he, because he's done these films with kids, you know, and he has to work around their schedule, and then he very often has cameos with different uh, adults. Uh, he's used to shooting this way, where the moment you walk on the set, the camera's pointing at you, and it doesn't. It doesn't move off of you until you're done, until all your work is done. Wow, so that, very I can't often, imagine what that's like. Yeah, I mean, really, very strange. Uh, yeah. And 
it, but but very often I wasn't playing across from any of the people that you see in the film. You I, mean, just, did you, I was playing across from you know script supervisors or uh, assistant directors. Or, you are know. you are you happier that way, or do you like working with actual real live actors, or would you rather just you know get it done and concentrate on what you're doing yourself? I'd rather be doing it, I think, in a, a more conventional way, depending on what the material is. Right. This material was such where, you know, you could tell just from that clip, it's so sort of crazy, you're having to imagine everything anyway. Right. You know, there's so many effects, you're having to sort of think of, I mean, it's a very, very effects-heavy film. And if it's about uh, someone who has a... Finds a rock, a little kid who finds a rock. And uh, puts it in a snake cup. Puts it in the yeah. and and makes anything you wish for comes true. And then and then it, it it sort of travels throughout the film from one kid to another. And so you can imagine any it just turns into havoc and chaos. And and all of that is is with effects. So you're imagining. I mean Leslie Mann and John Cryer are in the picture. And oh, I know I know uh, John Cryer. He's yeah. been here too. Not as tall as Robert Rodriguez. No hat. No hat. Yeah. Um, in this film, he's attached to Leslie Mann. They play husband and wife. At one point, they become sort of attached to one another. He was here promoting that very film. I've, I've now seen two clips from that movie. And never knew that they were connected Wait. in any way. Wait. Shorts. Yeah. Yeah, no, I... <laughs> I remember now. He hasn't been here yet, but he will be in the future. Yes. 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 I understand. And we're live, so I don't even know how that right. works. Right. <laughs> and I can prove we're live because I went to the all-night farmers market. And how, yes. else, how else could I have gone? Do you right. do you do you enjoy LA and its uh, We its also produce? could probably talk about this movie as if it were opening next week, for for instance. Is it? And it isn't. <laughs> when 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 is it opening then? August. August twenty first. Something. <laughs> Ah, you don't know August, either, do you? Yeah, August, middle August, of. middle of August. Middle. That's the time for the kids' movies. Just does uh, anyone know? When does anyone know when the movie opens? <laughs> August twenty first. August twenty first. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We could. John Cryer will be here just prior to that. I'm sure. <laughs> all right. All I right. bet. All right. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough of that. Oh, you've got a young baby, haven't you? <laughs> Haven't you got a yes. young baby? With 11 you? months. Not with me. Right, okay. Not secreted no, on your person. No, fit. No, the... yeah, right. Oh, please, let's try. No, no. Let's no. try! He won't fit. All right. And if we peeled one of those, it'd fit right in. And then you shove the peel in on top of it. Hey, you figured out how to do it. Oh, that's kind of good. You, have you ever thought of being like a Tony Robbins guy and having, you know... Think your way through into solutions, you know, I have like, no idea who you're talking about. You know, Tony Robbins, the giant guy with the big hands? <laughs> Tony Robbins is? I thought that was Robert Rodriguez. No, no, he's the big guy with the hat, and then Joan Cryer's the small guy, no hat. Tony Robbins hands. is the enormous guy, right. big, big giant, eats chickens like popcorn. He... Andre the Giant. Not as big as Andre the Giant, but in a way bigger. They both eat chickens. They both eat live chickens like, like popcorn. popcorn, yeah. No, Tony Robbins, he does that self-help stuff, you know, be motivated, find a way oh, to... Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, 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 thank you! Right. Right. It's the other Tony with the skateboard at the X Games. Oh, you know, you're thinking of Tony... Tony Hawk, who's, who has also been here. Well, and we come full circle. Or maybe will be here. No, no, he's definitely here. <laughs> maybe. Oh, God, you won't let that one go. Uh, it's lovely to see you. I'm, you. I, I, uh, I'm such a huge fan of your work, you know. I particularly enjoyed Boston Legal. A very nice show. Did you have a nice time with Shatner on that show? I did. Yeah. He's a funny old bird, Shatner, isn't he? <laughs> he makes me laugh, but he's an odd duck. He makes me laugh, too. Yeah. He's an odd one. Does he uh, make you laugh? Has he ever done your show? He has. <laughs> yeah, a couple of times. In fact, the last time he was here, he pretended, he was demonstrating how he was physically attacked by a dolphin uh, while he was on vacation. Did he tell you that story? Yeah. <laughs> might have made it up. Yeah, he might have made it up, actually. None of that anyway. But what it ended with, with him, him, I had to be him and he was a dolphin and he kind of pretended to have sex with me. <laughs> Best interview of my life, James. Best interview of my life. I guess you'd have to be amused or otherwise you'd yeah, feel yeah, sort of yeah, you gotta do a little violated, maybe. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> 
couple of kissing scenes. Yeah, that's right. You did kiss him a couple of times, didn't you? Ah, I got a terrible, didn't... terrible flu from him once. <laughs> Swine flu? Ham flu? <laughs> you know, I went, I got a terrible, like, sort of bronchial head cold about three weeks ago or mm. something. And I was in bed for, I don't know, a week or I don't know how long it was. And I finally, the cough got bad enough where I thought I should go to the doctor. So I went over to Beverly Hills and I, you know, I'd been in bed for a week and I really just put on a pair of four day old pants and shoved a hat on. It really looked weird. You rather, pants for 30 I days as an experiment. I heard about that. Yeah. And uh, I was feeling pretty grubby and nasty. And anyway, I went over to Beverly Hills. My girlfriend drops me off in front of the doctor's office and I went in. And this doctor is on a street in Beverly Hills that has a lot of different physicians, but also then a lot of plastic surgeons. Right, so right. I think that the, uh, the paparazzi sort of hang out. Right, there. right, I get you. I didn't see any, but um, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd seen them before there. Right. Anyway, so I go into the building and I go down into the doctor's office and I'm sitting in the little room, you know, they, they'd sort of, you know, squeeze me in between appointments. And I, they put me in one of the little rooms with the, you know, the stethoscope and everything else. Skeleton? No, no skeleton. Mm. It's trying to help. But he does wear one of those. Oh, he does wear one of those. Well, there you are. That's something. Yeah. So it's, it's it's quite like which a I skate. thought was sort of archaic, but he he uses, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, um, this is a real doctor. It's not a sketch. No, no, no. It's a real doctor. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> a sketch. So I'm sitting in there, and all of a sudden, I can hear across the hall, and it's a very small hallway, a very small right. little rabbit warren of rooms. I can hear someone with the most consumptive cough in this other room. I mean, from just from their bowels coughing up. I mean, just horrifying. <laughs> and then I hear the voice of somebody who seems to be the mother of the consumptive cough, and she's you know, trying to make him feel better and trying to calm him down. And then I hear the consumptive cough start talking and, and he's saying, well, I mean, why? Well, he sounds to be a teenager. And he said, well, what, I'm, I'm supposed to tell my friends? I mean, am I supposed to tell everybody that I know? I mean, well, I, you know, this is really, I'm really upset. And he's very, very agitated and she's doing everything she can to calm him down. And at that point, the doctor comes in. And the doctor starts talking to the consumptive cough, and it becomes very clear from their conversation that he's just about to leave in the next couple of minutes to go across the street to a clinic to get confirmed. So in other words, in a, he's in a Catholic sense? A, <laughs> bless you. To, he's he's gonna have it confirmed that he has swine flu. <gasps> Now, I'm a bit phobic. Right. Uh, I don't know whether it's any more than anyone else because I don't have much to compare it to. But anyway, for myself, I'm a bit phobic. But I was really, my girlfriend was also about to arrive with our young baby. And, you know, I, I completely freaked out. And I right. got up and I, I start to, well, I, I got to get the hell out of here. And I'm, I walk out to the reception area and the nurse at the reception desk is looking at me. I'm now at this point sort of sweating look a little wild, wilder than I did when I came in. I'm holding the doorknob with my shirt, you know, and I've got my arm up as if I'm going to like block germs like, you know, a football player or something, you know, or in a rugby scrum. And she looks, what are you doing? I said, I've got and I keep pointing towards a consumptive cough and I, I've got to get the hell out, you know. And the doctor now comes in too and he's like, James, what are, you, what are you doing? I said, I've got, to get, I've got to get the hell out of here. I said, I've got to go tell Leslie, at least, uh, you know, she can't come by with... The, okay, you, the baby, the baby. Gets right. I mean, yeah, this is just, be and, awful. And I keep pointing towards the room as if, right. how can it be any more obvious? You should be shutting down the whole street. Right, right, right. right. But, but right. to be fair on them, they do treat ill people, James. That's what they do there. They, right. they encourage ill people to go there to be helped. Yes, it gets worse. Uh-oh. So... Does it get longer? We must be out of <laughs> must be out of time. Hours. Okay. Hours, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I go out, I flee the building, I walk outside, and as I'm walking out, I'm dialing the cell phone to call my girlfriend, call her up and tell her not to come and, right. and so on. And she's driving, looking for a parking place. So I, 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 go, I dial the phone like this, I, and I bring my head up to bring the phone, and I'm standing in front of the building now, and there's the paparazzi. Oh, God. 
And they're not only snapping the photos, but they're videotaping, you know, the whole, you know, so it's, it's streaming. It's just, run, you know, running continuously right. and asking sort of inane questions. Everything. So, okay, I'm on the phone and I can't go anywhere. I know there's no car. Mm. I'm stuck in the street, you know. So I'm faced with that dilemma. Mm. The paparazzi or... Go back in the building to the back. swine flu. Swine flu or paparazzi? Paparazzi or swine flu. Well, and, and that's where we have to leave it. <laughs> where, and so what, what did you choose? I hung up the phone and went back in the building. Ah, good for you. Good. Jay Spinner, everybody. We got to go. My first guest tonight is the star of a new Broadway play called Race. It opens on December the 6th at the Ethel Barrymore Theatre. Please welcome the glory that is James Spader, everybody. James Spader. <laughs> It really is astounding. What, the, the mayor of East Cleveland that yeah. you worried about? That? I mean, no, I love that. I mean, I'm, isn't it nice? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I mean, I want, I'm anxious. I didn't know the story until I came here, and now I just want to go home and look on the computer. <laughs> I mean, to check my photos. Yeah, uh, well, do, do you do you ever dress up as a lady? You're famously I, sexually deviant. Yeah, you, do you dress I, up I as a lady? I have on the show a lot. On the yeah. show that I did for a while, I dressed yeah. up as you know, and I'd stay in the costume for you know a little while after and before. <laughs> What would you like best, the uh, cashmere or the nylons? I think the silk lace, right? Silk lace, yeah. I've I never mean, really properly dressed up as a lady. Nylons sound awful, really, but... No, there's a lot of sorts of equipment and bits yeah, and pieces, you know. I'm, I'm more kind of like, you know... I mean, but I make for a very nice-looking young woman. Not so young anymore, but... I actually dress up pretty well. Really? Yeah. When I dress up... I mean, you... better than Shatner. Well, yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> Shatner! When Shatner dresses up like a lady, he looks more like a dude than he did when he was wearing dude clothes. That may be on purpose, though. Yeah, maybe he's insecure about it. He might be yeah, on yeah. purpose. Have you ever been to uh, East Cleveland? I uh, haven't. No. Neither have I've I. driven around it before when I was on a cross-country drive, you know. Do you do the cross-country drives? I've done it a lot. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah, I've yeah, done it a lot. North, south, on both coasts. What do you drive? And driving? then across quite a few times. Do you drive in a, in an excellent all Ford vehicles. Motor product who advertise on CBS? No, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I've driven actually, funny enough, in different cars, but I've also driven, funny enough, in, in motorhome a couple of times. Really? An RV? Yeah. Oh, I like in that. In an RV. Do you, uh, And you... I had this funny thing that happened where well, thank I, God. I uh, rented... Yeah. <laughs> I, I rented a couple of RVs here in Los Angeles, and I was living up in the hills at the time, and... Right. and uh, Why I, did you rent a couple? No, no, at different times. Oh, right, I see. I thought it was like for you... A convoy. And your your transvestite entourage. exactly. And... uh, By the way, transvestite entourage is a book by Regina Slang, which I recommend that you get, yes. Is he... Is he ahead, though? Does anyone know? Was that? Is he ahead in the polls right now? I think he's going to win. They figure he's going to win. We're we're very excited. It's looking like he might win. He, she, I don't know. You know, I mean... Like, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, you know, Hillary Clinton dresses like a dude all the time. Right. Nobody has a problem with that. <laughs> I know. Uh... <laughs> so anyway, you rented I, two I RVs. Rented, I rented one RV. Right, okay, one. And I was driving down, you know, and it's a big RV with a huge front window and everything else. And I had just finished doing a pretty ho- high-profile movie that had come out. and what, what? And I can't remember what it was. Because right. I've gone a couple of times. But yeah, yeah. Was I've, it Stargate? Maybe across. it was Stargate. It might have been. I don't yeah, know. But that's anyway, a great movie. I'd it? done... I guess so, yeah. And, hey, no, it is. And, it's awesome. Anyway, All right, I'd, sorry, sorry. I'd done this movie. It had come out and everything, and I wanted to take a break, and I was headed back east. So... This story is so anticlimactic, really. What the hell? It is, Maybe you're we'll on get the right through. show for We that, might get through then. the yeah, segment, yeah, yeah. actually, before yeah. I get to the end of the nah, story. You'll, you'll be all right. Anyway, so I get in the RV, and I get the kids in there, and we get everything packed in. And this is a huge, you know, it's like 32 feet or something. It's Good a big, Lord, it's yeah, enormous. No, it's a big it's RV. It's a rock and roll bus. It's a rock and roll bus. Right. And a huge front window. And, you said that before. Yeah. Is it and two? <laughs> <laughs> Both times. Wow. Big front window. Right. Anyway, so I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, I'm going to hit the freeway. And so I'm thinking, you know, just the route I would always take 
at that time, in the house I lived in at that time, to go to the freeway was just sort of down the hill and head off, you know, go to the right. gas station and head off. And I headed down the hill to head off, and I'm getting everything sort of set, and the kids are in the back, and everything is Big window, fine. big window. Big window. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I find myself, I realize I've driven right down in the center of Beverly Hills. Oh. And I'm driving along, and in Beverly Hills, there's always, you know, just sort of traffic. You're stopped at a right. stop sign, yes, a stop, yes. stop light. Or yes. And there's always tourists. Yes. in Beverly Hills yes, that's with true. their cameras and so on and so forth. Right. And no one could have cared less. Really. <laughs> they couldn't have cared less. But the point was, I they found myself you, at a stoplight they, and all of a sudden I noticed and people are turning around sort of looking in this big window. Maybe they thought it was for the movie. What was the movie? Stargate. Stargate. Right. So they... <laughs> Thank God you're here to help with no, the story. No, no, no. This is really. the, it's what I do. Thank you. Uh, we... Uh, so maybe they thought it was like that scene in Stargate that was deleted when the RV came back from the ancient Egyptian planet. It could be, thank God. Yeah, yeah, no, that's all it right. Was exactly You're wearing that. stripey and I'm wearing stripey. I am. Yeah, it's nice. Thank you. Everything else I did have they, besides did... this suit is packed to go to New York. Oh, yeah, for the play. David yeah. Mamet play. People talk very quickly in a those plays. A great play. Oh, yeah. Is it really good? Yeah, a really good play. David Mamet's very clever. Yeah, and this play is really... Like, just, it's really one of his classic plays, you know, really... Is he very bad-tempered, David Mamet? I imagine he'd I be don't quite know. angry. Oh, you've never met him yet? No. I mean, I have met him a few times, but he hasn't struck me yet as being bad-tempered. But it's really... It's probably on his it's best that, behavior. It's just what you're describing, like, with Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and those great pieces that he's written where it's very sharp, very funny, very caustic, very provocative, very, you know, it's a great play. Who, who else is in it? Uh, David Allen Greer, Kerry Washington, oh, yes, and yes. Uh, Richard Thomas, four right. of us. And, uh, and will, they, uh, will there be singing and dancing? There won't be any singing or dancing. I see. And you expect people to go and see this? I'm hoping. <laughs> tickets are selling great already. Buy your tickets now. No singing, no dancing. No well, just people talking dancing. for a couple of hours? Just people talking very no quickly. Gonna see that, I think no one's going to go see it. I, you know what? I think actually right now we'd have to have two intermissions for it to last two hours. So it doesn't last that long? Easy evening. Oh, well, that, now, now you're getting my attention. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> It got my attention. Yeah, no, that's it nice. It got my attention yeah. immediately. So hour and a half, we're out. Now, it's it, an hour and a half, no intermission? Boom, I, boom, I think there we're go. out. Hour and a half, we're done. That's fantastic. Fantastic. But once you throw the songs in. See, well, I mean, for me, perfect thing after doing the TV show. You know, 16-hour day, you know, 10 months out of the year, now go yeah, to the play. Yeah, but you like doing the theater, don't you? You like yeah. doing all that. Well, yeah. I haven't for, I've done a play in over 25 years. Oh, uh, are you sure that this is why? <laughs> yes, I, I mean, I cannot wait because of, I mean, I love, I love doing theater and I haven't done it in so long. As soon as I started well, if working if you love doing Delmer, it and you haven't done it for 25 years, one would suggest that your actions are not commiserate with what actually you intend to do. I mean, you love doing the theater, but you haven't done it in 25 years. I, I love doing cocaine and I haven't I done it in 17 years. I can tell you, I don't have any idea. Do you still know whether you love to do cocaine? No, I don't. And I, and I think that if I were to do cocaine now, it would be cataclysmically disadvantageous to me. That could, you know, this Maybe, play could be cataclysmic to me as and, well. And I said a word that doesn't exist called disadvantageous. Yes. You're like, what are you like to that? I, it, I, I this, like this play could be a disaster for me. No, no, it'll be great. Once the songs start, the people will be... <laughs> I could sing or dance before and you, after. I, I bet you, you know, could. I could go out after and say, listen, if you want to stick around, that play was only an hour and a half. If you want to stick around for the next 15, 20 minutes, I'll do a couple of numbers. Just, you know, so you get, feel like you get your money's worth. What's that? What's that? I, Tony. That's oh, yeah. Not a bad, yeah. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. That's really not a bad People idea. People would like that. They it would they, like that. It would be like, oh. And I think it's better than, like, opening. I think you'd go out, because then it would be, but it would be sort of something to look forward to. You know, the play ends, and you know, there's going to be a little song It's going to be dance. time with James Spader, right. and you could change the songs, like uh, one night, maybe Jerome Kerm's Broadway, and then yep. the next night, maybe... A little Stephen Sondheim. Yep, or right. from Phantom of the Opera, where they sing that song or over and over standards again. Or might be fun every so often. Or, as you know, maybe some modern dance. Wow. <laughs> Interpretive, sort of... With something in a Something in a leotard, or maybe some lace underwear. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. So, so, James Spader, everybody. Please welcome James Spader, everybody. James Spader. Okay. 
Gaines? I'm gonna have to watch out for that one. What, the robot? I love Jeff Peterson. What's wrong? Why, why would the hat? What, what's wrong? <laughs> Wait, what, what's wrong? I see the hat on him. Oh, the, the lady with the hat? Yeah, she's over. Uh, oh, yeah, she's so I think she was at the bathroom. Were you at the bathroom, lady in the hat? I didn't think ladies in hats went to the bathroom. I thought that was all taken care of another way. A little anticlimactic, I thought, the hat. Didn't yeah, you think in the bit. end? Yeah, Probably yeah. should not have shown that. Well, you know, I my problem with the whole hat thing was that, you know, when they said, there's a lady wearing a hat, and I come out and I see the lady wearing a hat, it's a perfectly normal hat. It's not... Completely normal yeah, hat. Yeah, it's nothing, nothing... I was expecting some sort of Carmen Miranda thing. <laughs> Carmen Miranda, you say, eh? During the break, might have been able to grab something a little bit more spectacular. Well, you think we have giant fruity hats I thought lying I around? asked for one out there. Well, I told you to bring to me, come out wearing a funny wear, hat. Yeah. That, no, you see, there's a danger in that. Uh, no. Because you come out, Johnny Carson always said that, that if you come out and you have a comedy hat on, you know, after 30 seconds, you know, you're stuck you're with the hat. still stuck with yeah, the hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what the second seat is for, the hat. Putting your hat on. Yeah. Isn't that bad luck? No, putting your hat on bed. the bed is bad luck. The bed. And shoes on the table. Are you very superstitious? Shoes on the table? Yeah, you never heard that? Yeah, shoes on the table is bad luck. No, it's all right if your feet... It's all right if your feet are in the shoes. It's like if you come into a room and put your shoes on the table and say, I'll be back in a minute, guard my shoes. Should that would be bad luck. This is a desk. It's a desk. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You're the one that starts one a shoe. new show tomorrow. One, that's one shoe. Okay. okay. Well, that's half bad luck, which is... <laughs> Or it's a half hour show. It's a half hour show. <laughs> That's nice though. You're, you're you're doing some television after you haven't been here since Boston Legal, have you? Yeah. yeah. Been in New York. Yeah, that'll be nice. Are you having a nice time on it? I am. I noticed you're doing glasses off acting in the show. No, 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 no. That lasted one episode. Oh, and you put the glasses on? And I really, my eyesight has gotten worse and worse and worse with the years, and uh, I just. On that show, the whole cast is there all the time. You know, they're always right. out there in the office. And, right. And I, literally the second show, I think, I was doing a big speech and looking out over uh, all the office workers and everybody was out of focus and it was just, I just realized I'm not going to make it through a season, you know, <laughs> without being able to see, so I, now he wears glasses. Right, okay, well I think that's perfectly wise. You could try contact lenses. You ever thought of contact lenses? My eyes completely in, it will not tolerate contact lenses. But they reject them? Yeah. <laughs> Which I have very dry, I have very dry eyes, they don't water very easily, and, uh, I, and, and oddly enough I've been told that I don't blink enough. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what blink, it is, blink but I just... Yeah, I mean, come on, you're right. an intelligent man. You're like, oh, uh, better no, get a blink in. But truly... some blinking. <laughs> but truly, they don't... I've had to wear them because it got to a point where driving at night for films became really very dangerous. And uh, everything else, I was fine. Everybody's a little out of focus when I'm working on a picture. I spent a long time and in my life with fine. Was right. a little, uh, And that's, that's actually fine. Yeah, it's quite comforting. I thought... Yeah, I yeah. think so, too. Uh, reminds you of better days. And, well... Yeah, you mean when gentlemen wore hats? Maybe. Yes. It was many anyway, better days. Uh, but I, I, it really got to a point where driving, the only thing I couldn't do for a film where it really started to get dangerous was driving at night. And I actually have done that a lot in films. So You're known for it. You're the guy who drives I'm at night. I'm the go-to guy for yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, well, there's a lot of driving at night in this film. Night bus driver. Driving. So, so you, well, you don't actually have to drive in a film. Don't yeah, you, you do just pull you along? No, 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 all the time. They'll do a camera mount on the side of the car, you know, right yeah. next to the window, and... Yeah, you know, oh, that's the real show business. I know nothing of that. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. How are, you, how are you adjusted back to being in L.A. then again? Are you all right? I miss New York. Really? What did you miss? The pee-pee smell? The pizza? What? You know, I just... I mean, for me, really, it was... It was, it was the... The fact that the work was at night. I mean, I, it was so funny to me. I, I started out doing theater at night, and, right. and I loved that. I thought that... The job of acting was a night job, you know, you stay up late and meet But then you have to drive, and then you're screwed, so well, you can't. not in New York. But I, and I loved that. I really loved it. And then all of a sudden, it turned into a day job. And so being in New York and doing a play for a year, I loved that. I just love it. I love working at night. Well, you, it's nighttime here, as you can see out the window. The, uh... <laughs> I know, man, I know. It's like, oh, you got your sunglasses? On the way to, yeah, yeah, to, the way to this... Uh, yeah, late, late show. 
Well, I must admit, I, I do get a bit of that myself, you know, coming into the same job. You lived in New York for quite some time. I did, yeah, I lived in New York. I like New York. I'm, I'm very fond of New York. LA, I mean, I love California, too. I, I love, love California. LA, I'm not so sure about, to be uh, honest. No, 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 I like Los Angeles. I think if you, I love, I, I mean, there's, there's a side to Los Angeles. If you avoid the entertainment industry as a whole, Los Angeles is a great place. <laughs> and, and, and you can, you really can, and you, you can here. I, I know, I know, I know. But you gotta be here every. I got on that day. Right, eh? right. But but the truth is, during all of your downtime, if you really don't spend your time going to industry, it's right, a company do town. You, know? you, right. you do any of that? None of it. Well, well, how do you? you know? I do this because you know I do this sort of. It's thing. not really show business. And but right, right. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. But you know, if you spend your time downtown, or if you spend your time downtown. at places. Is that code? <laughs> what is downtown? Downtown? I, why, I could never go downtown. You mean that part of LA that everybody knows about but hasn't really been there? I, no. li I live east of here. You live e You live downtown? I live east of here. No, downtown is something they say in, you know, cop shows. There's go, a I'm taking you downtown. No, no. <laughs> There's a place down there. There's a place downtown? There's a town down there. No, no, you're making it up. It's no, a set. There is. there is. There's a town down there. I, I actually have to go downtown quite soon. I've got jury service coming up. Do you really? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Here's how I'm going to get out of it. Guilty. <laughs> actually, that might get me on. Or, or not guilty. Last time I did jury duty was in New York. I had a ball. I almost got sequestered. Wow. I was so looking forward to getting sequestered. And they sent me home to get my toothbrush and everything. I was very young. I thought this is great, you know, like I was fascinated was by that the big case. trial? No, you know, not really, you know. <laughs> no. And but I, you know, it's just a, all of it I just thought was fun, you know. And then they sent us home to get overnight stuff. I went down to the courthouse again, and it was like a gun possession and you know, something. Someone's pulled a gun on somebody or something. Right. And when I got back and it really was, and I think the jury at that point, when they were going to sequester us, we were, we were pretty deadlocked. I mean, we were, you know, there was a couple, few of us that were for, uh, no, for, you know, not guilty and some for, you know, it was really, right. it really was sort of split. We came back and we all, they took us into the courtroom and they were sort of sitting and then, and then they took us out of the courtroom into the jury room, we're sitting in the jury room and we're sitting there for a while and it became clear that something funky was going on. They brought us back into the courtroom again, and the guy had settled. Oh. So he knew you it could, was You like, could have, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so he took a plea bargain. He took thing. a plea bargain. All right, and you didn't get a chance to have a I plea think he hotel. felt that, like, if we're going to get sequestered, that there was definitely argument in the jury. And argument in the jury might very well go against him. Either that, either that, or it might, or the prosecution felt it's going to go for, for that it's going to go for him because there's argument in the jury. In which case, they really, you know, they gave him a great deal. I really miss Boston Legal, man. You do? <laughs> you were Did great you watch on the show? Really? I watched every damn episode of that show. You were great on that show, and I just remembered it right there when you did that whole court case for me. I was like, <laughs> you were great on that show. Man. That was a great show. It ended at the perfect time, though. Yeah, I guess. You know, you can't do it forever, but it's a great... That, that Kelly can write, that can't he? That was fun, yeah. Good Lord. Anyway, we're out of time. So, um... <laughs> which may come as a shock, given the fact we've been through an entire criminal trial with you. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, mouth, organ, awkward pause, or, uh, go for the big cash prize is my new one. I don't know. Not the mouth organ. Okay. So we have two remaining then. We have Maybe big an cash awkward pause. I'm very good at those. I'm not really sure I know what that is. But well, we just, you know, <clears throat> have an awkward pause. I'm good. We can add a subtext if you like. Whatever you'd like. Okay. I find you wickedly attractive, and I'm trying to sneak a look at your genitals. <laughs> Oh, there they are. <laughs> James Spader, everybody.
My first guest tonight is a terrific actor. He's a terrific actor, Jeff. The terrific actor. Terrific actor. Yeah. That's how. Uh, that's how you know when you can say words like terrific. Hapog. <laughs> <laughs> he is a terrific actor. He's in the new film Lincoln, which is in theaters now. Take a look at this. <laughs> Please welcome James Spader, everybody. James Spader. Lovely to see you. You look well. The seats are higher. The seats that. higher here. Have yeah. you haven't been in this new studio? I haven't been yet? in the new studio. How, how do a you feel? A little higher. Well, a little bit. Like, look. Oh, really? <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I've got. I keep a thing here in case Tom Cruise is ever on. Hold on. <laughs> hey, how's that? Yes, oh, there yeah. you are. It's like you're at home. And we're at the same height. Yes, yeah. yeah. that's a little light more like it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think so. There's a convention in uh, talk shows to have the guest sitting lower right. than the host. But when I did that here, people complained. You've lost a lot of weight. Yes. I've gotten not... a haircut. You look great. Thanks. What the hell, man? <laughs> Why are you doing Are you doing that Hollywood dust thing, complimenting me, and then something bad's going to happen? How do I look? You look fantastic. Okay. That's yes, what I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. No, it's great. You Lou, look great. And, <laughs> Stop. And congratulations on the film. The f Lincoln, what's it about? Ah! <laughs> it's a big hit, though. Well, it's a little early to tell. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's a big hit. It's doing very, very well. Well, and it's also, well. the you know, there's Oscar buzz, of course, for you. Get out. Oh, no, I'm just saying. People <laughs> say that. I haven't seen the movie yet. I know. All right, so I don't know. But I've read the book. <laughs> I yeah. have. I read oh, the book on which I read Team of Rivals. Oh, yeah. you did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very. The book was actually the book and the screenplay were both sort of concurrent. Right. Doris and Steven Spielberg had gotten together years ago, and she said she was going to do a book on Lincoln. Right. He said he'd always wanted to do a film about Lincoln. He said, "I'll buy the book." Before, well, it's and, Doris Karen's Goodwin. It's yeah. going to be good. And so yeah, he said, so I'll buy the book right. and so on. So she, you know, had it off and, and started researching it and writing it. And then he started the process as well of sort of developing the film and so on. And then Tony Kushner came in a few years later, uh, the playwright uh, and screenwriter. And he, they had tried a couple of other people, and then Tony came in. First screenplay came in at 500 pages. That's a little long. Yeah. The normal length of a screenplay is And he basically said, I think he said to Stephen, you know, pick a month. Because the film really only encompasses a few weeks, near the end of Lincoln's life. Yeah. I mean, it's political. It's a, sort of a political thriller. And, and it, it takes place uh, in a few weeks in January 1865, and it's basically about the passage of the 13th, 13th Amendment. Amendment. Right. Which was the amendment which? Abolished slavery. Exactly. So Thank the, you. Uh, 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 <laughs> now, Here's the thing, though. Did you guys, when you were making the movie, when you saw Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, that came out, you were like, oh, no, they're, they're doing our movie, and right. you had to take the vampires. Spielberg's like, i got to take the vampires yeah, I out. That blew, I gotta, out our, yeah. that blew out our release date. We changed, revamped everything <laughs> in terms of promotion and everything. That are, you, are you a very are you a, a history buff? Do you enjoy uh, that kind of thing? I, I'm fascinated by that particular period in American history right now. I'm fascinated by it. It's all had to be self-taught. I'm a high school dropout. Oh, me too. And Absolutely. So it's it's all been since then, right? But to a certain degree, and also this particularly fascinated me just because it was so particular and specific. You know, it was just such a sort of finite period of time, and and really focusing just on that piece of legislation. And and the, the but that piece of legislation they've been fighting for for uh, yes. almost a hundred yes. years. Yes. really. I mean, they were even been, in they've the, been arguing about it for, for well, long. even even before the the construction <laughs> of the Constitution, people were having the, this fight about the morality and of, in other countries of, too. Of, well, yes, because the the, the British stopped the yeah, slave trade when? very early on. Uh, they were they were much earlier. Uh, right. Okay. And I I don't know when it was to be honest. You find out. You got a, a Google and they. Uh, <laughs> But they stopped it, and then there was the. I heard this. I was Doris Kearns Goodman's going to be on the show, and then she wasn't. What happened? Oh, never mind. But the. Uh, I'm fascinated by the uh, organic nature of this because it came. It started run about the. 
Uh, well, they, when they were writing the Constitution, there was yeah. talk about it then, but some of the men were slave owners. And, yeah. You know. I mean, the amendment had been put on, had been brought to the floor prior to this. And just oh, got, yeah, 1820 passed. and yeah, before that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, I mean, I, I must say, though, it really, I'm a, you know, a, a, a small part in, in a very, very big movie. It's got over 140 and Spielberg, you say, he's well. the director. This character, Spielberg, there's a lot of talk about him. He he's might be able to... He's a comer. Yeah, they're saying, they're saying he might be able to do it. Yeah, and yeah. it is really stunning. I mean, Daniel Day-Lewis is just He can act beautiful. a bit, I've said, I've heard as well. He's, uh, he's one of those actors that, you know... Is he coming on tonight, or...? No, if he was, and he decided to be here, and was acting somebody else, you wouldn't even know. Right. That... <laughs> He could be Jeff. If he, if Daniel Day Lewis was playing Jeff in a movie, he would plug something into the wall and and live like that. <laughs> He's a method actor, isn't he? I, that's secretary. Yeah, yeah. That's also. That, that's two last actors time I, that are. Last time I was here, I watched poor secretary at stand backstage <laughs> yeah. and not be used the whole show. Just that sort of happens, standing yeah. there in two parts. <laughs> Secretariat actually says no, he was not in two parts. <laughs> Secretariat now has his own stables with a beautiful view of the parkland beyond. <laughs> where it is always daytime, even although it's nighttime. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> what a lovely evening it is to It is, it's beautiful. We have to take a break. Do you, do you mind? I don't. Good. <laughs> Humanitarian movement because the conditions of the slave trade were so important, right. and it was becoming known. Then, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I was talking to this guy, and so we were talking. We got the date on the, when the British abolished slavery, which was 1833. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, but they abolished the slave trade even before that, like further back. So in the next commercial break, you can find that out. <laughs> uh, so there you are. Well, it's uh, it's a fascinating thing. Do you get on well with uh, Steven Spielberg? Very. I've met him a couple of times, and uh, I, uh, I, he, he told me that he has a bar in his house. I would be serves, surprised. He serves Guinness to himself. Guinness, he drinks Guinness. Him and all his little friends from all his movies. Do you know that, that I, was, I was shooting a film in Dublin once, and there was this fantastic uh, second AD, uh, assistant director. Assistant director. Uh, who... <laughs> was working on the picture and he said to me at one point, we talked a lot about Ireland, he was a historian, he loved history, he loved, I think his, I think his father may have been a professor or something, anyway, he, and we talk about politics and sort of the state of things and he was he, almost describing Ireland to me. Yeah, yeah. No, he said, he said that he felt that probably the most significant single event in modern history in Ireland was the formation of the Guinness Beer Company. Hmm. <laughs> and he felt that because There's been a few events in Ireland that have been... Well, uh, yes, you know. yes. It, but I'm talking about in modern history. Yeah, I'm and so am I. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. You notice how I dumped it off on someone else yeah, entirely. I, 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 the smart way to do it. Right, that's, uh, yeah, that was, yeah. I figured that was the way. Yeah, it's def when talking about the Irish situation, always best to say somebody else said this. Yes. Yeah. But he, he, he was speaking to the fact that it was a society split, great deal of strife, um, tremendous amount of Irish guilt, uh, the heavy hand of the Catholic Church, and he felt... Or not, depending on your point of view. Yes. <laughs> He, and he felt that the Guinness Brewery gave a country a way to sedate itself. <laughs> I found it to be absolutely right, actually, okay, while I was there. I have to say, when I was drinking Guinness, uh, for me, <laughs> was a splendid idea of most right. nights. Yeah. You might have agreed with them at that time. I would have, yeah, yeah. But then again, that was me. Yes. And you know, I would drink anything. You're not, you're not much of a drinker, are you? Oh, really? <laughs> what do you drink? A lot of wine. I Almost see. anything, though. <laughs> I 
find that rather refreshing to yeah, hear. Yeah, no, that I mean, if you a... go, if I go to someone's house and they're making, you know, if there's a cocktail of the, you know, some if you show up for dinner or something like that, and they're making a certain cocktail or something, I'll have at least one <laughs> of those, <laughs> and then I'll switch to something, something switch else, to yeah. wine or something like that. But I like, I like to drink. And I like to drink different things during, you know, Richard Thomas, who I did a play with in New York for about a year. Um, if you, I'm 53, and if you can imagine, he said something to me that I never, all of a sudden he said it, it made such sense. You know, people talk about not mixing different alcohols and so Yes, so yes, yeah. Well, he said that's just a bunch of hogwash. He said that's just... Uh-oh. You don't... I mean, he says alcohol, the, the alcohol content is the alcohol content, and however it's dressed up doesn't matter. You know, I mean, generally what would make you sick is the fact that if people who are mixing lots of different drinks generally are just drinking too damn much. Yeah. But he, he said to me, it doesn't really matter. And you know what? I have been living that way ever since, and I'm absolutely fine. Fair play to you. Time has happened to me. It's a very rare thing. I mean, Spader's had about half a dozen of them, That's but they, uh, he's a terrific actor, isn't he? Yeah, he's... He's, been, he's a lovely man. Crazy. No. Yes. No. Yes. I spend every day with him. He's totally sane. Well, only maybe to you. Maybe you're crazy, too. You never know. 